But who better than me? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back yet again to another Base Talks. As always, please like and subscribe, share with a friend, a colleague, a relative, an associate, any and all in between, it is appreciated. This one, um, I had the uh, pleasure yet again of talking to Frank Smith. I like when I talk to Frank because we don't always keep it strictly boxing. There's always a little bit of extra stuff that we'll speak about keeps it fresh and he actually said to me once off camera he prefers it that way um you know to maybe have something that's not what he has said several times before um, i always try and phrase the questions in a little bit of a different way so he's not just giving me the same answers he gave to the others but you know um had a few minutes there i was hoping to get a few others uh popping as well but this was a, a very interesting interview. Uh, be a good to chat to him again, hopefully at Matchroom headquarters, uh, where I can get a, a more in-depth interview of both him and Eddie just on different things. But with that being said, please have a look, let me know what you think, and I'll be back afterwards. This is Base the Kid, the Hardcore Casual, and I'm delighted to be joined by um, freshly shaved head of uh, Frank Smith. Frank, how you doing, man? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I need a bit of work. You know, it was a very rushed job. My missus did it, so uh, it needs a bit of work, but something different. I was hoping no one would recognise me. To be fair, it actually does suit you more than the, the quiff does, so it's appreciated. Look, we're in this big event for Joshua versus Ngarnu, um, happening on the 8th of March. Speaking of which, actually, I do want to ask, why is it that we've now adopted this Americanism of March 8th? We are British, we do, we do day, month, then year. Why, why have we moved away from that recently? I don't know, I don't really ever think about too much about the structure of the day. But you're right. But it is in Saudi. So maybe in Saudi they use March 8th. No, I think they did it the same. I think everyone just adopted the American way of, of you know, month, day, year. Which is just weird, but... I always want to say it the way how I have to write it on the form because if I put that on the form, they'll they'll get they'll kill they'll say that I'm wrong basically. All right, but look, getting back to this uh, this event itself, I mean, essentially we know how it came about because the Wilder fight can't take place. But in your mind, was this the next best option, or were there actually other? Um, boxing matches that could have taken place because a lot of people have said oh well Joshua he might as well fight another boxer what does the Ngannou fight do for him? Look, I think you know it's obviously a huge commercial fight I think Francis Ngannou showed in that fight against Tyson Fury that he you know he's not he's not out of the out of his depth against the best um, and you know a lot of people are going to compare this this fight so when Tyson Fury fought Francis Ngannou, um, I think there's other fights out there. There's there's big fights to be made in the division. I think the focus for AJ has very publicly been become a world champion again. Right now, those belts are tied up. Undisputed fight February 17th. But, you know, right now, the focus is being the biggest possible fights. And this, that's what this is. Now, speaking of Joshua, obviously, he's just come back off of, um, you know, a great victory over Otto Valin. Um, a lot of people said he looks like he's back to his old self, he's back to his best. What was your sort of um, opinion on his performance and I guess the pseudo link up with uh, Ben Davison um, until we know what's going on with Derek James? I think the uh, I think the performance was great against Otto Wiley. He showed that spite from the first round. I think the key thing for him has been the momentum and the activity. This will be his fourth fight in 11 months you know kicking off back in april last year against franklin you know a brilliant win there helenius after that then wallin then this and then you know he wants to keep active so i think that's key for him i think the ben davison link up has been brilliant you know the, the confidence is there there's a great relationship there and that's what he needs um and i think you know he's in the best place he's been and you'll be seeing that with his performances and it's only going to improve seeing how he has looked, especially in his last fight, but it looks like he's really enjoying this momentum. As you said, four fights in 11 months. Do you almost feel a bit, I don't know what word to use, I don't want to say upset, maybe disappointed or angry that you haven't been able to get AJ out more often over the years, especially since he won the titles? Look, I think the reality is when you're fighting in fights of the scale AJ's been in, you know, stadium fights, um, you know, defending multiple belts, you got you got mandatories, you got to build up to these huge events. It's not easy, you know, and there is, don't get me wrong, 
he could have probably fought more often at certain points, but you're dealing with all of those different, you know, factors to put on those huge scale events. But you know, the focus is now. You know, we we we've delivered. You know, this will be his fourth fight in 11 months. He'll continue to stay active after this. Um, so rather than looking back. I think now we've got to focus on what we're delivering now, and that's, that's the key, and that's why we're seeing these improvements. Now, talking about Francis Ngannou, arguably the strongest puncher, the hardest hitter that AJ will have ever faced, and as we've seen, he seems to be quite adept in the boxing code, not just a striker from MMA. So what are your major concerns about AJ taking this fight? I think any fight at this level of the heavyweight division is dangerous for any heavyweight and, and Tyson Fury showed that you know no one would have said before they would have seen that that you know that display coming from Francis Ngannou you know a lot of people said he won that fight um, so you know he's got to be AJ's got to go in there with, with you know his A game and take it seriously and I'm sure he will because he always does but you know as you say Francis Ngannou is a massive puncher you can't hide away from that fact um, but every fight in the heavyweight division is dangerous at this level and that's the reality of it. Now, looking at the lanyard around your neck, it quite visibly says Queensbury Promotions on it. So, we got this massive um, link up between Matchroom and Queensbury for a day of reckoning. First things first, did you ever think that that would happen where you would be essentially, you know, working on a Queensbury show and vice versa? And then also, how has that been so far between sort of you and George in public as opposed to maybe behind the scenes? Yeah, look, the relationship's good. The relationship with George has been good for a long time. You know, there's been a lot of public back and forth historically with Frank, but it's all fun and games. And, and you know, at the end of the day, we want to deliver the biggest possible events for our fighters, and that's on both sides. Um, and if that means working together, we're always going to be competitors, is the reality of it. But we're competitors with a load of different promoters who we speak to regularly. You know, whether people see the Oscar De La Hoya, Eddie Hearn stuff and Golden Boy. I speak to Eric Gomez a lot. We've got John Ryder fighting uh, Mungia in two weeks' time. You know, so I think the difference here is there was so much history between, you know, the two companies. Whether it was real or whether it was just because of this type of stuff, um, now at least we're coming together and we can work together and that's going to be key and that's, that's only going to be beneficial for the sport and the growth of the sport and delivering the best possible fights. Now there was a much lauded lunch dinner that was supposed to take place a few years back whereby there would be the best of Queensbury versus the best of Matchroom. Well, His Excellency Turkey Alal Sheikh has actually now said that his vision for 2024 Riyadh season is to pit Matchroom versus Queensbury 5v5. I'm not going to ask you for any potential matchups because I know that you won't give them anyway, but what uh, do you feel about that partic uh, particular event and how much are you, I guess, going to back your boys against uh, the Queensbury lot? I think, look, I think it would be a... Uh tremendous show if we can make you know we can make good fights between you know five great fights that, that are out there um i'll back different people differently they've got some brilliant fighters so have we so it depends who we end up with you know might be a maybe we have a five a side game before as well we do something like that we just do something all week between us all and we'll be a big competition the winner wins a big prize um but no it's uh, it's good that we're talking about these types of things and and can deliver those sort of events which you know the public will buy into and um, last one for me, um, His Excellency also spoke about Better Be against uh, Bivol. Uh, he was looking for that to hopefully take place in June. Um, quick question on that one, actually, before I just sort of get to your thoughts on that fight. I mean, Better Beef is about to sort of go into Ramadan um, in March, which ends in April. Um, do you think June might be maybe a bit too soon for him to train? I mean, historically, I guess how, how often he takes between his, his training camps. And then also, um, are you, do you have any concerns about actually doing an event in Riyadh in that month? Because we do remember what happened, you know, in the AJ Usyk fight in August. You know, ring was very wet, very slippery. Everyone was perspiring uh, profusely. Do you think that might be a bit of a hindrance? Uh, look, I think... You know, first and foremost, when you look at the time frames, I think Ramadan is April 13th, roughly around that sort of period. It will finish. You know, you can easy, you could get a 10-week camping. I, I believe. You know, His Excellency said they were looking at potentially June for that fight. You know, Dimitri Bivol signed up for that fight. He's ready to go. Um, I definitely think we can see it. Um, sure, work to be done. You know, we've done, as you say, an event in Saudi in August before. It is hot, but we'll do it indoors with some aircon, and I'm sure it'll be fine. But um, yeah, I, I think. 
that's a fight people want to see. It's been a fight called for for a long time, and it's a massive one. It's a big one for the sport. All right, very last question, Frank. Um, so look, the Saudi influence is brilliant, it's excellent, but um, I'm assuming both you and Eddie are still very much committed to both your UK products and your USA products. So have you got any um, maybe tidbits of, of information you can tell us about some big fights that will be happening away from Saudi Arabia on Matchroom? Yeah, look, it's very much a focus, obviously, for our business. You know, the UK, uh, US, you know, we've got our shows in Mexico, we've got Japan as well. We're all over the world. So, you know, we don't take our eyes off the ball of what we got to do. We've got to deliver big nights and we'll continue to do that for our broadcast partner in the zone. Um, I'm not going to give you t clues of things that aren't announced because that is not me, but Eddie will. I will let him give you all the secrets away, but there's some big nights to come. And like I say, we're very much focused on still delivering those huge nights. Fair enough. Frank Smith, thank you very much for your time and speak to you soon, hopefully. Cheers, mate. Good to see you. So, as you can see, Frank has pretty much said, you know, it's been um, pretty good working with Queensbury. Him and George, he said, have a great relationship. I guess the same as Eddie and George have a great relationship. Um, a lot of the stuff that was happening before, you know, he was like, well, how much of it was just orchestrated drama for, for the attention and how much of it was real? He, he probably said not that much of it was was real, uh, but it was all ton, tongue in cheek, uh, fun stuff. But now they get to sort of show a better relationship out in the open as opposed to just behind closed doors. So, yeah, um, looking forward to that that matchroom versus Queensbury card if it takes place. I've got my five fights, but I'll talk about that on um, an episode, which I'll probably be putting out on Wednesday. So, yeah, look out for that one. But um, Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe and share all that good stuff. And that is another Base Talks Down. So I will catch you soon. Peace.